My name is Midwife Sally. Welcome to today's program. On this program, we teach about pregnancy, labor, and delivery. Today, I'm sitting at Tea Havana in Tema. Yes, so you can have your parties and everything here in their garden. Yes, and I have a celebrated midwife right here with me. Okay, so she's going to teach us a lot today. Our first topic is how are you going to choose your hospital for delivery? So you are pregnant and you are wondering which hospital should I choose? Okay, so she's here to talk about it. Her name is Nanekia. But on social media, you can find her as Celebrity Midwife on Instagram and also on Facebook. Are you on TikTok? Yes. Okay, on TikTok to Celebrity Midwife. Yes, so you are welcome. Thank you so much. Yes, so how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are the pregnant women? They are doing so well. So wh where do you work? I work at Principal's Hospital, Medina Estate. Medina? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So which department? I'm at the labor ward. Labor, labor ward. ward. Yeah. Wow. Then you know a lot. <laughs> okay. So welcome again. Thank you. Yeah. So today our topic is you are pregnant. I just had a, a lady who said she is pregnant just yesterday. and. She is not somebody who frequently gets sick, so she's wondering where exactly she should go for antenatal. Can you give us some insight into that? A, a new mother trying to choose a hospital. Okay, thank you so much. So, okay, thank you so much. So, first thing you should consider when you want to choose a hospital as a first-time mother, there are some factors that you should consider. The first one should be based on proximity. Proximity in the sense that you should choose a hospital that is close to you. A hospital that in case of any emergency you can rush to. You know, in Ghana here, many women prefer their obstetricians or gynecologists to look after them when they are pregnant. They might be far from you, but then um, you can still go to them. But you should get a hospital that is close to where you are staying. So that in case of emergency, you wouldn't go that far distance to meet that doctor of your bike and get to a hospital nearby and the doctor can even speak to the midwife attending to you to know the progress of where um, your labor or your pregnancy. Okay. And another thing too is you should also consider a hospital that you can afford. Some people attend most um, private hospitals that really charge a lot. They can start with antenatal and when it gets to delivery and the charge is so huge, they now want to go to another hospital and the unfortunate thing is they might go without taking their antenatal book because most of the private hospital they take the antenatal book from you so you go without all the information all the labs that you've done previously which will also incur another cost on you because they have to run all the routine labs for you before they can attend to you and another factor is you should also get a well equipped or well okay, resourced hospital before you go there is it good for the hospitals to keep somebody's antenatal book well it depends it depends on the protocol of the hospital but i know a lot of private hospitals that keep the antenatal books of their clients but ideally it shouldn't be so because as a pregnant woman you can get sick or you would have um, any emergency at a point in time travel. travel and you need to go to a closer hospital for treatment or even continue antenatal care okay. there yes so you also mentioned um, the fact that you can get a hospital close to you even if you want to go far yeah yeah so can a pregnant woman go to two hospitals at the same time yes you can you have a hospital let's say you are at sema so you have a hospital you have a specialist at kolebu that you attend to um, the antenatal clinic there or maybe he do the checkup on you but when you are sick you have a private hospital or maybe tema general close to you you have a midwife you are very confident with or you are very familiar with so you want to talk to the midwife how you feel on a day so you have to talk to the midwife the midwife can communicate with your specialist then they will get the whole information about your pregnancy okay, okay. so with that you can have two midwives yes at the same time. okay you can go ahead yes okay so another thing is you should get a well equipped or well resourced facility so you see in ghana we have a category of hospitals that um they are at least they are provided with the basic resources that can help you to deliver successfully like maybe they even the polyclinics the health centers the chip zones at least they have the basic essentials that can take care of you the pregnant woman and the baby in case of any emergency but then 
um, you shouldn't just go to any hospital at all any hospital at all, because now there are lots of hospitals around and in case of emergency is it then that they will rush you to a bigger facility for further management okay so what what is a specific thing that you will look out for like you're going to deliver myself yes so i would look out for a hospital that is well equipped as i, as I said well earlier equipped. on what well is the equipped as in they have competent midwives so this is um something that we can argue on because you might not know that the midwife attending to you is competent or not but you know as individuals when you go to a facility that they are taking good care of you you see it and you of know course. it when you ask questions and they are able to find solutions when you complain and they are able to satisfy you that is when you know that oh these midwives are very good so meaning they can really take good care of me in case of labor wow yeah, that, and I'll also look out for a place that have maybe a blood bank a blood in case bank. of emergency. Is it then that they have to rush to Kolebu or 37 for blood? They should get always get blood on standby. So a hospital with theater. And a theater too. So yeah. we have blood bank, a theater. Okay, so that's good. So talk about the theater. Why do we need a hospital with theater? Because we have a lot of women in the rural area. So how yes. would you balance that? Yes, so even at the health centers and the polyclinic, there are no theaters, but they attend to women. Just that the midwives have been trained in such a way that when they sense danger or they sense that this delivery will be difficult, this woman is a high risk woman, they would refer the clients for further management at the bigger facility. Oh, okay, so the there's um you need a hospital too that can also refer you like yes. a good referral system. Yes that okay. would refer you when they see that your management is beyond them so you would need a bigger facility for further management okay so let me come to this issue of blood um, donation i'm very passionate about um, let's say the group that has not received blood jehovah witnesses so uh, for jehovah witness women what would you advise them when it comes to the issue of blood because i have seen a lot of cases where they come and then they are like, I will not take the blood. Yeah. And then some of them end up dying. But these facilities they have come to, they never took any time to maybe check the hospital to see whether the hospital has prepared for them. Because I know there's a way or there are other things they can, um, they can get prepared for them, at least to save their lives in, in case they don't want blood. But a lot of them don't do that. So what advice would you give to them in choosing a hospital to? So as a pregnant woman who maybe due to your faith, you don't receive blood at all. When you start antenatal, the first thing you have to do is identify yourself. Tell your midwife, please, I'm a Jehovah witness or due to my faith, I don't receive blood. One, the midwife will start taking good care of you. The midwife will tell you the food to eat that will help you sustain that blood level that you need for delivery. The midwife will also put some measures in place. Like, you know, if you are sick and you get malaria, you would definitely get anemia. So those things that can be put in place just to prevent you from getting anemia, for okay. us to maintain that level of blood for you, we will do it. Your diet. Um, even prevention of malaria, sleeping in mosquito nets, giving you the SP to take to prevent anemia. And we have preparation for them. Some come with this jello fusion, some come with jello fusion too. And because they don't receive blood, they are, it's most of them, they are careful. They are very careful when they are coming. They know that I don't receive blood. They have some wristbands on them. They have their book. They have letters that they've I have written. seen a lot that they know, like they come and they are telling you about their faith. But then it's like, the hospital is not prepared with all those things the so, women have not so if you them. tell your midwife that you are a Jehovah witness, witness right get... from the antenatal day and booking day they will prepare for you so they know okay. that because i've witnessed a lot of cases that have to undergo um iol induction of labor and you know it's in the policy that anyone who undergoes iol should have blood donated but then these people come and they come with just jello fusion but then we are able to attend to, to them attend to them yes okay. and they go very very okay. without no complications okay that's good so you just have to tell them that you are a Jehovah witness and they have to prepare for me for you right from the beginning from the okay. pregnancy till you deliver that's great so 
she's making a point here. So there's something they can use sometimes in place of blood when it becomes very necessary. And so yes. if you're a Jehovah Witness or you don't take blood based on your faith, you can tell the hospital so that they prepare for you. Because for me, it is very disheartening when they come and the woman is saying, I'm not taking blood and there is no other preparation made for them. Because sometimes when you're coming into the labor, we wouldn't know that today a Jehovah Witness person is coming or that kind of thing. And so we need to all make sure that we prepare. Yeah, so what about um, cesarean session? I'm just bringing this in. We have a lot of women who close their minds that never. So when they are choosing a hospital, they may not, never consider it. Even when you tell them that you are referring them, it becomes a problem. So how would you advise such um, women? Do we have to be open-minded? That is my question. Yeah, you should be open-minded. Um, you know, you can deliver vaginally with your first born, second born, even third born, even fourth born, but the fifth one might go through caesarean section. So we can't predict the end of labor. That is one thing. So you should just have this at the back of your mind that whatever my doctor or my midwife tells me, I'm going to abide by it. Because they attend to you, they know what you are going through and they want the best for you. So if we tell you you have to get a um, caesarean section, not that the doctor wants money or the midwife wants you to just undergo the caesarean section. It's because of one or two reasons or risk that might happen. That is why they want to take that measure just to save you or the baby. So if we tell you you have to do CS for this particular baby, just abide by it. You can ask questions so that you'll be answered. But it is not something that you should just um, say that I delivered all vaginally so this one I would just do it. There are so many cases that you can never ever um, go through vaginal delivery. Mm -hmm. Example like the cord around neck when they detect it you have to go like um, if the baby is in distress you can't predict labor. So when the doctor assess you and you need caesarean section you just have to obey okay. it so finally i wanted to ask have you had a situation where because of the woman's choice of a hospital she has had a problem before like have you so a lady had attended a private hospital for nine good months and the baby and um, the woman um i think the 36 the 36 week when she went she had them um, iufd and they referred her to our facility they didn't tell her anything wow. and when she came we realized that um i think she had um she was just a speedy defect full defect and they were giving her sp sp oh. they had given her twice oh. and she she didn't know so i asked her when you took the drug didn't you react she was like she was just feeling unusual but then she was fine and she came with IUFD. So when we we looked in the antenatal book too, nothing was written. They just told the refer her, uh, clients refer. Oh. So if you are not being attended to by competent midwives, you you are at risk. You know, and even with the records in the book, at times there's no BP. Even with the blood, the routine blood, there's no. Um, figure for so HIV how were they care of? yes and she was paying every month that she had attended more than 13 times so every month that she goes to she pay so she has been paying but it ended up that she had IUFD and she came to her you place to, her. yes she lives in your community too very close to the hospital too <laughs> so what is all this perception about sometimes government hospitals but when the issues come that's uh, where they refer yes, them they to still us refer them to us yeah. it's, it's serious okay so these are these are really lessons okay you know here is from anywhere only from competent midwives like us okay so thank you so much we have learned a lot the point here is that make sure that you choose a hospital that is close to you you can afford it they have equipment and they have blood bank, they have theater and also they have they are really really ready to receive you. Any question that you have, they should be ready to um, to help you with it. Your final words. Okay, so as we are all aiming at um, reducing maternal mortality, we are preaching that pregnant women should take their medications 
you know, routine medications. They should visit the hospital as soon as they notice any deviation from the normal. They shouldn't wait that they are waiting to their next visit. That's when they go and see their midwife. It might be too late and little or nothing can be done at all. So as soon as you notice any change in your body, just rush to the hospital for early intervention. Thank oh, you. Thank you so much. My name is Midwife Tali and I'm here with Celebrating Midwife on Facebook, Instagram and also on TikTok. So you can search for her page and then you follow her as well. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.